Hi, everybody. This is Donna Prosser, Chief Clinical Officer at the Patient Safety Movement Foundation. We're here today to talk about infection prevention and the impact on health worker safety. And joining us today is Dr. Christine Lacerna. Dr. Lacerna is the Regional Director of Infection Prevention and Control and the HEROES Program at Kaiser Permanente. Welcome, Christine. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. I'm very excited to be here and talk about infection prevention. Great. I wonder if you could start by telling us a little bit about your background. Yes, um, I'm an infection preventionist. Uh, I am a critical care nurse by background. Um, I am currently the director of our regional infection prevention here in Northern California, as you said. Um, we support 21 medical centers across um, our region. Um, we provide resources, leadership, consultation, and um, a lot of um, support, um, especially during the pandemic. Also under me is a program um, that um, help um, our medical centers prevent happy or our pressure ulcers and falls. Great. Well, let's go ahead and get started then. I know we got a lot to talk about today. So um, tell us, start with, uh, you know, what is a comprehensive infection prevention program and what impact does that have on health worker safety? Right. So, um, you know, a comprehensive infection prevention program is actually, in my mind, quite simple. The, the primary goal of any infection prevention program, whether you're in a hospital or, you know, a, a community healthcare setting, is primarily to prevent infections in occurring in, in your setting. And that is infection to, to the patients, first of all. That's usually what we think about when we think about infection prevention in healthcare settings, um, and also infections to our um, employees or healthcare workers. So there, there are many uh, components or critical components of infection prevention program. And here in the United States, you know, we go by the CDC recommendations on what those are. Um, and a critical element of that is um, uh, worker safety or healthcare worker safety, patient safety, obviously, environmental safety is another one, um, education being a very, very critical component um, of it. And um, in the last, I want to say, 10 years, uh, and this is very, very um, uh, true today uh, with what we're experiencing, is uh, a focus on emerging infectious diseases, um, which is what we're doing with, with the pandemic. So that is in a nutshell what uh, a comprehensive, basic um, infection prevention program is in a healthcare setting. Great. And, and so for those organizations that maybe don't have some of those protocols in place, what are, you know, what are, what are some of the general protocols that, that hospitals today should have? Yeah. No, thankfully, um, the, the protocols are, are quite accessible and available. Um, in, in United States, for instance, um, CDC um, ha has a very uh, comprehensive um, guidance or guidelines and recommendations when it comes to um, infection prevention protocols in a healthcare setting. And um, at the international level, obviously, the World Health Organization have um, quite similar and, and, and quite comprehensive infection uh, prevention protocols as well um, available to, to healthcare settings. So, uh, you know, the, you, you talk about the protocols, and I want to think, I, I'm thinking about um, the basic um, infection prevention um, programs or procedures that should be in place in any infection prevention program. I said that twice. You know, standard precautions being one of those, um, and I can talk about that in detail. Um, Transmission-based precautions, um, you know, when we know what kind of disease we are dealing with and we know how it's being transmitted. Um, th there is vaccination or immunization program, both for our patients and for our employees. Um, and then management of harm. Um, and when I talk about harm in this context, I'm talking about uh, exposures to infection, uh, infectious diseases. So whether it's the, the patients or the, the healthcare workers being exposed to, to the diseases and how we manage them and how we support them. So 
And, and of course, uh, you know, um, again, I want to say education, um, healthcare worker education and patient education. So those are, to me, the main components, kind of the, the foundational um, uh, elements of an infection prevention pre uh, program, regardless of where you're at um, in the world. So with the, you know, with that list that you just shared with us, I'm thinking of my 30 years in nursing. I mean, it feels like we've been talking about this for a long time. Um, I wonder if you can tell us, you know, shed a little bit of light on what are the typical gaps, typical gaps that you see between these best practices that we know and what's actually happening on the front line? Yeah. You know, I actually was thinking about this before our interview and, um, I want to start by saying that there is always um, a discrepancy between policy on paper and actual practice. And um, when we ask why, you know, for instance, a frontline worker, whether it's a nurse or an environmental staff or a physician, why they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, um, the common answer is that they did not know that they were supposed to be doing this. And we kind of take that for granted. Um, I think we're all guilty when we're doing auditing or um, adherence monitoring that, you know, this is just a usual kind of trying to explain away a behavior. No, I did not know it. But when you do ask them probing questions, you do find out that they, in fact, don't know it. And it could be as basic as hand hygiene. It, it is surprising to me um, how we've been talking about hand hygiene or how to properly clean your hands, you know, from the very beginning. And we assume that um, healthcare workers know this by heart, but it's not true. And simple things like hand hygiene is not quite simple at all when you're applying it um, uh, at your own work at the front line. So I think knowledge um, or lack of knowledge of lack of understanding of technical aspects of anything cannot be taken for granted. So that's why I keep reiterating education. The other thing that is a, a, a reason for, for gaps is that the policy or the protocols as written, while it looks good in paper, um, is not quite um, practical or um, applicable when actually being applied um, and when you're working with an actual patient in a real life environment. We find that we always have to adjust our policy and our procedure and expectations once a lot of people start um, implementing the policy um, because we are working with people and um, people are just not perfect. So they, they can have a uh, policy. So they always find a way of making adjustments to um, for a policy to uh, be applied in their own environment and, and their own practice. And I'm finding that's okay, as long as it's safe and it can be done. So that the discrepancy between knowledge, between practice um, and the policies, I think are the main gaps that we observe um, why the, there are um, you know, a gaps in, in compliance when it comes to infection prevention protocol. Wow, that's a really great point. I think we can pretty much apply that to everything. <laughs> yeah, it's one of our core principles that we believe for hospitals is we got to make it really easy for the front line to know what to do. Otherwise, they're not going to do the right thing. So, yeah. And, and the other thing, too, that we forget, it just made me think of something is that, you know, we, we often write policies um, and, and, you know, I think a lot of organizations are guilty of this, but especially in a system. Um, uh, like ours, for instance, where we have a region, or we even have sometimes higher than that, and then you have medical centers underneath you, we are so um, serious and um, devoted to standardization that, that sometimes we forget that we're actually dealing with 21 medical centers, like thousands of different people. And standardization may have different meanings to, to different people. And, and Almost always, when we don't bring in the front lines at the very beginning, we get what we call drift, which I actually think is okay um, because we haven't taken into consideration how a policy or a protocol would be applied real life. Um, 
happens. And then we're surprised why, why drift happens. Of course it happens because now it's being readjusted and being applied in real life. So that's fine. So anyway, frontline engagement to me is, is very much um, a critical element for standardization and what you were saying, reliability. So that just made, you made me think of that. That's a great point. So for an organization who maybe doesn't know that there is a gap between what the frontline is doing and what the expectations are, what can an organ what you know what can healthcare leaders do to assess whether or not they have those gaps? Rounding, rounding, rounding. Actually going to the frontline, going to uh, the units and um, Auditing is one thing. Okay, we do need to audit. Um, that's part of um, a formal program. You need to, to monitor adherence, so you have data, um, and there are some regulatory requirements too for auditing. But when you're actually rounding and watching people do uh, their job um, and having conversation with them, that's when you find out um, the gaps. Um, and, and I think that it's more um, informative and more um, reliable than, um, or, or, or more important than uh, the, the information or data that you will get from auditing. When you're actually watching people um, apply the protocols or um, implement the policies or, or the initiatives that you, you've been sponsoring as a leader and listening to um, what they're saying, what they're finding um, and the questions. And, and, you know, being able to hear what their questions are and um, you as a leader providing that, um, that feedback um, real time. So surrounding so rounding is very important. And I've also said engaging the front line. And what I mean by that is um, actually bringing in a front line uh, physician or, or nurses or other ancillary staff into committee work or um, into um, oversight group so that you can hear um, what's happening where the work is is actually taking place. So I think I think these are all like communication and engagement um, in addition to to adherence monitoring. So leader rounding to me is very important. And so um, do you have any other recommendations for what hospitals can do to improve their uh just their overall infection prevention plan for healthcare workers um yes i mentioned um education uh, being very important and um creating or supporting your your infection prevention um, program to have um a, an education plan um that takes into consideration the actual needs of of the front line and then supporting that that program and supporting the, the front line to have access to, to that education is important. And then the education cannot be just an annual education. Um, it has, well, you need to have an annual education, obviously, but it has to be flexible enough that um, you can pivot, you can kind of change um, um, what you're offering depending on the needs of the front line and depending on what's happening. like what we were just talking about before we started the recording, all that pivoting that your organization had to do because of the pandemic. So you need to have a program with that kind of flexibility and that can only happen if that's being supported by the leadership and the organization with resources, whether it's human time, uh, sometimes always money um, is, is quite important. And then letting people know that, you know, that there's this educational plan, there's this educational offerings and giving people time to actually um, uh, take advantage of, of the programs is important. And what about health workers themselves? Do you have any recommendations for what they can do to keep themselves safe from acquiring infection at work? Yeah. You know, what really came through during the pandemic is, um, to me, individual responsibility. Um, it's kind of ironic that uh, given the accessibility of information nowadays, that a lot of our frontline staff chose to be uninformed. And I'm saying ch chose because it's hard to ignore the information that's coming through. 
when it comes to Bender. Now, it's kind of hard to navigate, um, you know, yourself through this, the, all the, the information and the changing information that, that's coming through. But I find that our frontline workers tend to rely on their managers for, for information or tend to rely on their peers, which sometimes it's important, but um, trying to, to, to do their own research and educating themselves, I think, is, is not coming naturally to, to our frontline workers. So I think there, there is that, there has to be an em emphasis on um, individual responsibility when it comes to educating yourself as a healthcare worker, as a healthcare professional, um, uh, asking your manager questions about policies or procedures that you do not understand, making sure that you are asking the questions and escalating them, and holding your manager responsible for the answers um, and making sure you're getting reliable answers. The other thing is holding your peers accountable for, for their actions. And I don't mean to audit <laughs> or call out your, um, your, your coworkers, but you know, being watchful and um, watching out for that coworker. If, if, you, if they're doing something that they're not supposed to be doing, um, being able to call that out and have that conversation. But of course, you can only do that if you know what the right thing is. So it, it is important to know what the right thing is, not only for the safety of your patients, but also for your own safety. And that's very critical during the pandemic. As you said, there is no patient safety if there's no healthcare worker safety, especially with this pandemic. If you are sick yourself, how can you care for your patients? How can you care for your family? So you just kind of contribute to the problems in the community when um, you do not care for yourself. And as healthcare worker, you know, you are in a high risk environment. So you need to be extra careful than a regular person in the community. And of course you need to be extra um, educated um, because of the environment that you're in. So individual responsibility when it comes to education, education and, and being healthy yourself, and, and being watchful, not just for yourself, but for your coworkers too, are, are important um, for our healthcare workers. Wow, well, that's, that's a really, really great point. I think you're absolutely right. And I think as clinicians, it is our responsibility to practice by policy, but it is the organization's responsibility to make sure the policy is followable. <laughs> so. That's right, that's right. And that makes sense, right? Yes, that the policy exactly. makes sense. <clears throat> that's right. Excellent. Well, Christine, thank you so much for joining us today. I really enjoyed talking with you and I hope we can have you back again to talk with us about another topic. Thank you so much for having me today. <laughs>